would like to make your introductions, uh, we'll let Beverly go first. All right. Good evening, and thank you all for being here. I'm Beverly Roper. I am the first district commissioner and have been for the last three and a half years and want to thank many people in this room who gave me that opportunity. I am a lawyer. I have been a public defender. I have been a city magistrate in the city of Pittsburgh. I have been a federal prosecutor and I have been a partner of Hush Blackwell Sanders. Actually, it was Blackwell Sanders, Matheny, Weary, and Lombardi. I still practice law. I have clients that I've had since 1994. Um, I am also, as I say, the first district commissioner. I have very much enjoyed the last three and a half years because I was able to implement something that I had not known other governments to do, and that is paying cash. We have not taken out any debt on our roads. We pay cash for roads. We have stayed within our budget. We don't initiate debt. And because of that, my feeling is that we are now number one in Missouri for quality of life. And we're not just number one. If you dig into the, into the um, numbers, and the link for this is it's the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. The link is on my website. And you can dig in. We are quite a bit ahead of the second place finisher. We have 47 points. The high man, the, the, we want to be the low man. We have 47. Number two has 85 points. The reason that we are number one uh, is because we have high quality of life. We have wonderful health factors. We have wonderful health outcomes. We are number two for socioeconomic. And the only thing that we really are miserable at is environmental. And that is because each of us gets in our own sole cars and we drive to work alone. And that took us down to number 27, and that's why we had 47 points. The closest county to us is 85. Stop. All right. That's that one. That was 30. Go ahead. It was two minutes worth. Okay. That two minutes. My name is Deb <coughs> Marwood, and I, um, I'm running for first district as well. Um, my husband, Eric, back here, wave your hand. He's my husband. <coughs> 26 years. I've been a 27 year resident of Platte County and we have four kids together. They're, they range in age between 17 and 11 years old and so we do have a vested interest in what goes on in Platte County and the, and the health, the ongoing health of Platte County. I have a master's degree of public administration. I was an analyst at the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City where I drafted multi-million dollar budgets on an ongoing basis. Um, after I hung that up in order to raise my kids, I volunteered quite a bit in the community. I, not just in the schools, but also in Parkville, where I live. I was chair of the Parkville Ambulance Committee, because public safety is very important to me. I also served on the jail committee at Black County a couple years ago, because of course, <coughs> public service is very important to me. And we were looking at possibly building out a 10 to $21 million jail expansion. I had some concerns about that. so. Um, I am not a politician, I am not a government bureaucrat, I'm not an attorney, an EP lawyer, I'm, I'm like a lot of you, I'm involved in my community, I'm involved in the schools, I'm involved in, in, in um, issues that, that are near and dear to my heart, but I'm not a politician or a bureaucrat, so this is one of the first, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, and so um, I just ask you to give me a little bit of grace, I'm not used to <laughs> talking to a bunch of people here. Um, I, I do think that some of the most important things we can do in county government is to focus on our core um, government uh, services, like public safety, law enforcement, prosecution. We really need to focus down at home on those um, subjects, and we haven't really done a good job of that lately. We need to make sure that the long-term uh, financial health of our folks in our community centers is secured. We need to budget long-term for those, and we have not done a really good job of that in saving for future maintenance for those in order to protect those. And we need to address issues um, when they come up and not kick them down the road. I mentioned about Stop. the environmental issues that, oh, okay, thank you. Okay, next we're gonna move on to the questions that I think you both were given, was that correct? Yes. Um, and then after that, if we have some time, we'll allow our audience um, to participate for some questions that they've given me. Uh, we'll have a minute on each one of these questions. You'll be notified in 30 seconds and then stop that one minute. Beverly will take the first question and then that will follow up. We'll get further questions and vice versa. Okay. First question. What is your short short term, five year or less, vision? 
for the future of Platte County? My vision is to continue the strategy of paying cash for our government services and not taking out debt. I would like not to have to pay any fees, no interest, instead have the banks pay us. I think that is very, very important. Also, I think we do need to support, of course, for our public safety. One thing I have never heard in Platte County is anyone, no one has ever come up to me and said, I feel afraid. I am scared. That's thanks to, now do I have another 30 seconds yes. or am I done? You have another 30 seconds. Oh, good, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, thanks to our sheriff and the wonderful uh, sheriff's department that he has developed, we are, we are at least secure in our homes according to um, the, any complaint or, or um, what I want to say, any kind of comment. Somebody asked me recently, what is the biggest concern of your constituents? And it came to me that no one had ever said that they were afraid. And I think that that is a real benefit. All right, next um, The vision, the short-term vision for Platte County, I, and when I think about that question, I think of different areas of the county. I mean, financially, certainly, um, we need to be more secure in, in and paying off our bonds and our debt is going to get us there. We have the YMCA debts that um, that are looming over our heads, and those are going to be paid off in 2021, I believe, and that will really help us to be financial secure as a county. Um, I would like to continue the practice of not, you know, taking out more and more debt if we don't have to do that. Um, quality services, providing quality services to our taxpayers, and being more transparent. I feel like that we need to do. Uh, more things in order to make government more accessible and transparent for people, and I think we'll get to talking about that a little bit later on. So, thank you. I think Mario will take this next question. Um, we're, we're living through a period of significant change in, in many ways in our society and in the world, and the next 20 to 30 years are going to be quite interesting to see how we all move through with the demographic challenges that we're facing um, and, and just kind of the technological changes that we're living through. So, what do you see longer term vision for Black County? Well, Platte, yes, Platte County is going to be impacted um, by a development called the Twin Creek Creeks um, development, and that is mostly in Kansas City. But there were figures that were uh, highly inflated that, when I served on the jail committee, were used to try to justify a ten to twenty month, one million dollar jail expansion. Um, but whatever whatever our vision is, it needs to be based on reality and not these pie in the sky figures that will justify larger edifices for the government. Um, there's going to be approximately what they're talking about is 75,000 new residents in the Kansas City area, but the total build up could take 50 years or more. So there is going to be growth in Platte County, and then we have an aging community as well. So probably more services that address the aging community are things that we're going to need to focus on, and then the, um, the land use for that whole Twin Creeks area too. All right. Well, I agree that we need to have aging services um, because I hope to be erect and still breathing in 20 to 30 years, I can tell you that. Um, again, I would reiterate that um, this, this financial plan of not taking out debt is honestly, I'm like a broken record on that. I think that is really the, um, I've ne I never thought I'd have a chance to actually implement that. I implemented it <coughs> in my life, but not publicly. Since doing that, it has just been a wonderful thing. Um, and the Twin Creeks build out, you're right, that is absolutely going to impact this county, and we are preparing for that now. Um, we have, uh, we're working with Kansas City, and we're going to protect uh, the, re the natural resources that are within the area, and the parks that are currently there. Um, are being taken care of. So I think that's what it is. We need good roads, good transportation, solid law enforcement, and basic county services. All right, next question, Beverly, you'll take first. I'm gonna split this into two parts. I'm thinking about the, your context of your vision for Platte County, either short or long term. Um, how, do you, how do you plan to handle the potential growth in Platte County, and more specifically, the impact on the county office? Well, the impact, the impact will be handled as it occurs. Nothing is going to happen overnight. But we will, um, we will simply incorporate, we have additional taxes. I was just checking our, our tax rate. Um, last year we were up 1.6 on sales tax. So far this year we're up uh, 2.6. We will handle that. We will need to put money away. 
saving money for future for the future is very very important and that is something that needs to be done it's rarely done by politicians but we are doing it we set aside a half million last year in order to eventually work out the futures area in our jail which will give us um, additional beds uh, quality area that is needed for various um, legal requirements that the federal government has put on uh, counties like ours but staying ahead of requirements saving money paying cash all of that helps our future and our children um, potential growth in Platt County it will be significant it's probably going to be gradual it needs how our county adjusts to that needs to be based on reality. Like I said, when I was on the jail committee, for, uh, the initial jail committee report gave us figures that were highly inflated in order to support the build out of a 10 to $21 million jail expansion. And what I did was I, uh, I investigated with KCML planners and uh, BDC and got some more realistic projections. So we definitely need to do base our decisions on reality. Um, and, and, and we need to not kick issues down the road. You mentioned about saving for the future. We've done a terrible job saving for parks futures. Over the past 16 years, we've had a half cent sales tax and we've saved only $3.4 million for future maintenance. That's 3% out of the 100 million that we've uh, collected so far for future maintenance. And that is the equivalent of less than two years of maintenance. So we've done a terrible job with that. I, I kind of heard you hint at it, but I, I wasn't clear Dagmar, let you take this first and second part. Do you think the county will need a new jail, yes or no? And if so, um, how would it be funded and what year would it be built? I believe that our our next step would be to finish out the basement of the current jail. I do not believe we need a $21 million jail and to bring in immigration prisoners from the feds or KCMO. I think that's a bad move. We don't want them up in Platt County. Well, um, we are we are housing KCMO prisoners in our jail right now. We're earning $55 a night. Um, and we have, what, about 20? 18. 18? We've got 18 in our jail right now. We have plenty of room in the jail. Uh, I do not think that we're going to need a new jail in my lifetime. We're going to build out the futures area. Now, that said, it depends on how fast KCMO builds out Second Creek. And if it you know, if we build out 40,000, 50,000, look at Staley Farms, look at the areas over around Shoal Creek, um, that has built out very rapidly. So we'll have to see how it, how it, how it turns out. But we are saving for the future. All right, next question, uh, a little bit of background for it, and there's several parts to it. The half cents parts tax began in 2000, August 2009, therefore the tax expires at the end of 2019. Tax generated about 8.6 million in 2015 and is projected to generate over 150 million dollars over the next 20 years. First question, simply yes or no. Um, Beverly, you first. Is it your intention to ask voters to renew the one half cent park system? I. It is my intention to ask the voters to renew a parks tax, not necessarily a half cent tax. It will depend on what the voters tell us and the property owners tell us that they want. Okay. Dagmar. My current thinking is that we need to uh, ask the voters if they could renew a quarter cent uh, sales tax for, for parks and stormwater instead of the half cent sales tax. I feel like that's going to cover the future maintenance, that's going to cover the current maintenance, it's also going to cover some stormwater issues that have not been addressed. So. Next question. Uh, who started? Who's better than right? How do you intend on, main, uh, on maintaining existing parks properties and what do you feel the cost is? What research have you done on that? Um, maybe elaborate on that, that one. Sure, her first one. Which one? That one. Yeah. Okay. Um, the parks tax, the properties require three point, uh, we currently have $3.4 million in maintenance saved up right now that we've saved over the past 16 years, which is not very much. It'll take us possibly not even two years of maintenance work is what that is. So we've done a really bad job of planning out for the future. We've just, as a county, assumed that taxpayers will continue this half cent sales tax, which I think is very poor plan. It's just um, lazy. So what I would like to do is ask voters to uh, put on the ballot a quarter cent parks tax, which will take care of current infrastructure, help start saving for 
future stormwater issues as well, and then also a, a quarter cent law enforcement tax. So the law, law enforcement has its own revenue stream, and they can pay for things like jails. We can look at possibly the, sur the salaries of the sheriff's department, see if they are in alignment with what where the counties are that we're losing people to. Um, I Stop. think that's very important. Well, a quarter cent sales tax uh, for parks would, would take care of the maintenance and it would build, um, it might build a couple of parks and it will take care of programming. So that sounds like a pretty good deal. The issue comes with whether or not we will need, for instance, another building like we're in here tonight. And whether we want to take out $12 million in debt and have a, you know, a, a contractor build this thing and, and pay all the interest and fees that that requires, or if we want to save that money and then build with cash. You can't just lower taxes and then expect to have stuff appear. Obviously, we have to pay for it. We are Republicans, and so that would be the way that that would be handled. But I, right now, I think we're good with a quarter cent. It depends on what the people tell us when we go out and survey them. All right, continuing on this line, Beverly, you'll go first. Uh, how do you determine when Black County has enough parks? Well, I think we, we you know, yeah, that's right. Everybody wants parks. I mean, everybody is so absolutely happy about the parks that the people, the naysayers are just, you know, I used to say the same thing. I mean, how many baseball diamonds and how many wheels do we need? How many soccer fields do we need? How many of these things, I mean, how many, how many of the YMCAs do we need in Platt County? We did a survey monkey. In fact, Parkville did one as well. And what it turns out that most people want is they want access to natural areas like trails. That Line Creek Trail is one of the most highly used features of this county. And it costs us very little. little. It didn't cost that much to put in. But again, I am a 65-year-old woman. I like the Line Creek Trail. I don't have children that play in the baseball fields. But there are plenty of people who do. And that's why each of us, we have to listen to the people. We have to go out and survey so. and find out what's needed. Thank you, Mark. I just really don't think that we've got we built our park system from completely from scratch almost. We've got we we didn't have any parks when we started 16 years ago. Now we have six parks, 30 miles of trails, 850 acres of green space, two community centers, a Shiloh Springs golf course, and a, the Springs Aquatic <laughs> Center with KCMO. Okay, we have made great strides. It has positively impacted the quality of life in Platte County. For sure, okay. I am a YMCA member. We've been, our family's been for on for four years now, so I've got that disclaimer there. But it is, it has positively affected us. But we can't keep building if we can't afford to maintain the parks. We can't afford right now. We can't afford it. We can't afford to maintain what we have. If the voters don't approve a renewal, we are SOL. We have no maintenance money left. It won't take us two years. So we need to be responsible and only build what we can take care of when we haven't done that. Amen. <laughs> um, last question kind of on the part of the what, you, you mentioned Shiloh, um, and Dagmar, you can start us off on this. What, uh, when you talk about parks and, and when you get into golf courses, golf courses have a proven business model. And, and it's an interesting, in the industry, it's a kind of an interesting divide between public and private. Um, we do know that Shiloh has been taking, or the county has been burdening some of the additional costs. Um, so what do you think should be done with Shiloh Golf? Me, I'm first? Yeah, you're first. Um, Shiloh has cost taxpayers $10 million. And it conti continues to cost us at least a quarter of a million dollars every year. We have a dozen golf courses in the, in the Northland that are private, not private, but they're open to the public, that are fine, that are making money, they're, they're, I don't understand. We need to really look to see why the county is in the golf course business and why we continue doing that when it's such a drain. And the money is being taken out of parks now, a quarter of a million dollars a year, and it could be applied to something else like future maintenance. So, and, and also, another thing is that Shiloh is costing us $106,000 now to hook up to the sewer because 
we have not been addressing our DNR violations that we've had out of Shiloh. Shiloh Springs has been getting uh, Department of National Resources by wastewater violations for nine years now. Nine years we've been getting them, okay? They've been making headlines. We have been sticking our head in the sand, not addressing issues and kicking them down the road. Only this year, when Commissioner Ron Schieber brought this to attention, did we deal with this. Beverly, you're All right, um, I was out of Chilo today. We have a new company called Kemper Sports who is running Shiloh. Um, and I took a picture of this. I think it's uh, established in 1994. Carol Tome was the presiding commissioner. Scott Spangler was the first district commissioner. And Chuck Reinecke was the second district. And it was designed and developed by Martin Investment, Jerry Martin, Gary Martin, and a third Martin on here. I took this because this, it, there is no question that Shiloh is a, is a problem. And we've paid it off, I mean, we've got it paid for. Um, what, an option is to sell it, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, the Tuesday night men's league is the most active men's league in the entire <laughs> metropolitan area. And you start to talk to these guys and you think you were taking away their, their firstborn. But anyway, I know, I agree. I, I absolutely agree with everyone here. Stop. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, not only are you guys running for office, but you're essentially audition, auditioning for a job uh, that carries a pretty decent salary with benefits. So let's per, put out kind of an interview question on the floor, um, and we'll start with Beverly on this one. Uh, do you believe that you do or will work extremely well with all county elected officials? And if so, can you please describe a situation or example that would prove that to us? Well, I, yeah, absolutely, I would work with all elected officials, so as long as the elected officials do their job correctly and it, and it doesn't impact the county, I, of course, would work with, with elected officials, and even if they did something that did impact the county, I would work with them to correct it. Um, we have had occasion uh, since I took office where we had an elected official who had a, a, just a terrible time with her statutes and, and complying with them. But um, uh, she's no longer in office, um, and there have been other issues um, with elected officials, uh, one just recently, but we will, we will soldier on. Um, all the elected officials that I work with, every one of them, I work with very well, and it's very easy, and they are highly competent. Dagmar? Um, I chaired the Parkville Ad Hoc Ambulance Committee because public safety was an issue, and, and, it, and our ambulance service was becoming an issue. Um, we were a, a group that organically came together and decided that we wanted to investigate some different options and see uh, what kind of recommendations that we could make to the city. I had worked with um, Southern Platte Fire Protection District as the first responder I saw, Mike Neuberger here. Um, we pulled him in and asked him questions. We pulled in our service providers. We looked at maps, we analyzed data. When we were done, we ended up recommending um, some no tax increase solutions that would increase the level of service in, in Parkville. And at the time, I made this presentation to the mayor and the council in Parkville. Um, I made it to a mayor who I had been on opposite issues with on a very hot topic in Parkville earlier. So, and he, he was so impressed with our committee's recommendation that he asked us if we would consider as a, consider stand going, as a ongoing standing committee, which I declined because I did not want to. <laughs> All right. Talking about taxes next, and Dagmar, you'll start us off with this first question. Platt County is funded through a number of sales taxes as well as a property tax. Uh, the general Platt County uh, tax is a half cent, parks is one half cent, road tax is three eight cents plus a portion comes in from the state. You have local use tax and you also have a property tax of six cents per hundred dollars assessment. First, do you think these taxes are in line with what the actual county needs and would you propose any changes? Dagmar starts off. Perfect. Um, Thank you, Andrew. Um, I would definitely look at restructuring taxes to lower the overall tax burden to taxpayers. When I go around doing doors um, and, and you talk about getting input from, from citizens, I, I strongly believe that you would not have increased the property tax levy in Platt County if you had even done one block worth of doors because what I'm hearing out there is that people are hurting with their property taxes and it doesn't matter if your property taxes are $1,400 or $14,000 people are, are hurting with that. So I would, I would 
I would actually encourage you to drop that down to zero as soon as you can. Even before, I, if I were to be elected and get in office, drop that down because it is not necessary and people are hurting. It's not, we should not be doing that. I'd also, as I mentioned before, ask, um, put on a ballot a quarter cent parks tax, parks and stolen owners tax, a quarter cent uh, law enforcement tax. Um, that would also help us. And one of my pet peeves is the use tax, which, oh. So. <laughs> Beverly, same yes. question. Well, yes, the, the, um, I pay $24 a year on my property tax in Weatherby Lake for the county. And that takes care of all county services and the sheriff. Um, now, when I go to buy something in Platte County, of course, I do get that one and three eight cent sales tax added on. But right now, uh, my sales tax—I mean, my my property tax on my home is two dollars a month. Um, I went over to the collector's office. We ran a a, um, a cohort on a hundred and hundred twenty thousand, and it. Uh, was a, a dollar twelve cents a month. Now we were handed an unfunded federal mandate, and the prior commission had taken out a lease. And every year we have to pay one point two five million dollars for radios. If we raise the tax a nickel, because each cent brings in twenty five uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, so that covers that payment. And we did it, and we uh, the, the collector kept Stop. not one complaint. <laughs> Can I, may I rebut that? Or not rebut it, I think, I would comment. As long as you are okay with her. Absolutely. And, and I would comment, too, that since the property taxes were raised, it increased up to that point. So it is possible to, possible to bring that down without hurting, you know, hurting the overall impact of the general revenue. So. No, I would just say that, that we did that and we covered it. And you cannot lower taxes and then expect prosperity just to show up because you're going to need debt. Debt is, is part, of the, part of the process. We have to make sure that we have enough put away before we do that, and we cannot just willy-nilly lower taxes. We'll be Kansas. Do you feel uh, there are IT and infrastructure issues in the county? And if so, what do you feel should be done? Beverly starts off. Yes, um, I, our county, our county IT services, I feel are are fine, but we could improve them. We need to run a program that checks our security. They have these programs that you can run apparently every two years that absolutely more or less turns your IT inside out to make sure that it is secure. And I spoke with our uh, Ted, uh, our the head of our IT. And uh, today, and he recommended that we go ahead and do that. Um, we have not been hacked that we know of. Um, there hasn't been any of that uh, uh, with Platte County, and um, we're happy about that. But we need to keep it that way. So that's what I would recommend that we do. And that costs about two hundred thousand dollars actually to run that. Yeah, I would recommend getting a third party to do a test on our security, but I do want to chain back to the subject that I was talking about. My pet product, my pet peeve on use tax. Um, for every single sales tax that we have in Black County, there's a commensurate use tax that brings in revenue. That revenue has always gone into general revenue, and I think that is not what the what the voters had asked for when they voted in a parks tax or roads tax. So when the parks tax passed, right now we've got over eight million dollars that comes in for parks. There is a commensurate use tax that's bringing in about $1.5 million. With those roads tax, it's $1.2 million. And that all gets into general revenue. This is money that should have been going to parks and roads, and it's been going into general revenue. And it's giving the commissioners a, a, a motivation, a negative motivation, to always keep putting sales taxes on the ballot. And if I'm elected, I plan on weaning the county off of this parks use tax. Revenue crack is what it is. We need to get off of that so that we can be you know, have transparency in our governing, in, in, our, in our finances, and not continue putting half cent taxes on the ballot. Uh, moving on. Can I respond to that? As long as you don't mind a few rebuttals as well. Sure. Okay. Oh, very good. Um, I mean, if we do that, it's going to general revenue now. And if we do that, then that, that nickel that we added will have to be raised in order to cover the expenses of the county. So I just say, if money doesn't just you have to use the money that you have. 
Now, if we want to put that into parks and, and we do that, that's fine, but we'll have to then raise raise the property tax. That's all right. But I don't agree with that. I don't, I, I don't agree that property taxes should be a go-to funding source. And when if we do end up doing like a quarter cent parks, a quarter cent law enforcement, we already spend a lot of money in the law enforcement out of general revenue. What we could do is start weaning back on that, pulling back a little bit on that so that we aren't spending that use tax and putting that in general revenue. I completely agree with, disagree with that. And that's actually why, one of the reasons why the parks tax was renewed at half a cent when it really didn't need to be renewed at half a cent in 2009. It was because they, they required that revenue to come into general revenue. Yep, moving on. Um, lots of uh, publicity regarding the uh, treasurer's small mistake. And uh, what do you feel should be done about this situation? Uh, Dagmar starts off. The treasurer does not report to the commission. It is an elected <coughs> office, and the voters end up voting for whoever that person is going to be. So they'll, they'll, they will take care of that. And I am not, I have not been privy to the meetings that uh, my opponent has been with um, council, and apparently there's been hours and days with that council. So I am not, I'm, I'm not privy to the uh, state statutes with that. But where I think Ms. Roper and I differ quite a bit with uh, accountability has to come, uh, deals with the bigger issue of human life. When you have a human resource director that has been arrested and convicted of their fourth DWI, and they are employed by the county, and they were arrested by the officers so that they were a danger to the community with a blood alcohol content of two times the legal limit, that's a problem when they continue to be employed at the county, okay? And it's a human resource director in charge of vetting employees for the county. Okay, in the real life, you would call that a former Stop. employee. Um, Beverly, I'm going to give you the opportunity. I want you to respond first to the first question, and if you would have anything to rebut on that, I'll let you have a little bit of time as well. Go ahead. All right. Um, well, in terms of the the treasurer, the treasurer has statutes that the, tre the treasurer is to um, act under, and there are procedures that actually track those statutes and the treasurer didn't follow them that day. And that's all I know. Um, and he didn't, and, um, and Commissioner Schieber, of course, was tangentially involved by just being named as the person. And, um, and it was just all an unfortunate, an unfortunate occurrence. And um, we'll, we will continue to try to recover the money for the taxpayer. We have not done that yet, but we will, and we're moving forward on that. So just so that you all know, that's happening. Um, with respect to this, with respect to the other issue, you know, I, I, it's just when it, when it comes to to taxes, I realize that people are are very upset about them, and so am I. But I think it's again very important to realize that we need to pay cash <laughs> for what we do. We make better decisions. It is a reason that we are number one. I know that you can't see that, but I swear there is a relationship there. We are paying for what we are, um, what, what, what we're buying, essentially. Did you have any comments with regards to the commentary of the resource? I really, honestly, I, with respect to that, first of all, I think the facts are incorrect. Um, with respect to, to various uh, numbers of violations. I don't know that, but I've been told that. And you've expressed that to folks here tonight. You're on video, and I'm sure that that will be reviewed. Sure. Um, yeah, and so that's fine. And then I, all I can say is that our human relations person is very, very effective. And um, the fact that she was arrested, and she was caught, and she is currently serving probation, is something that she is living through. And um, she is still very, a very, very effective human relations director. And I would invite you all to meet her and talk to her. Okay. Um, kind of coming back to the treasurer, some, some believe that charter government uh, could prevent issues like the mistake that was made by the treasurer. Do you believe that if Platt County was a charter county, this would not have happened? Beverly, you first. No, I think that 
I think that we are fine uh, the way we are. It's much cheaper than a charter form of government, the way we, the commission. The fact is that a person did not follow <coughs> the statutes and the procedures. And that's what happened. And that's all that happened. And we are seeking to correct that. And, um, and we will. A charter form of government would be more expensive and this, the commission is lean and mean and I think that we are just fine with the commission. I do, do you? I kind of agree, yeah. yeah. Okay. You make that work? Yeah, okay. I would agree. There's only four charter counties in Missouri, um, which is less than 4% of the counties in Missouri and there's a reason why. It's because it adds additional layers. It probably does cost much. It's, much more, the administrative body is larger. Um, I can't imagine that it would be faster. Uh, so I, I think it's just a knee jerk reaction, and you need a little bit more than that to change your entire form of, of government. So. I, I take it as both your guys are good with the question on charter government. Don't need to expand on that. Yeah. All right, moving forward. Uh, the library board has proposed uh, or com uh, communicated their desire, I should say, uh, to raise a 32 cent tax levy. What are your thoughts on this and the reasons for doing so? Um, Dagmar starts off. My understanding is that there is going to be an eight cent um, levy on the ballot in November, I believe. Okay. Um, and, and I enjoy libraries. I've been a, li a volunteer librarian for the past two years at my kids' school. And nobody loves books probably more than me. So, but I, I question the need to raise the levy when our, our tax base naturally increases anyway, and if the reason is just because we haven't increased it in so many years, then I'd say you need a better reason than that. Especially when you look at um, people are doing more online reading and, and they're not getting hard copies of, at libraries as much anymore, so you would think that the whole role of libraries would start shifting. We need to look at that, so. Well, I totally agree. Um, the fact of the matter is that on my tax, that I paid $24.02 to the county for the sheriff um, and county government, I pay $130 for Mid-Continent Library, and I never use Mid-Continent Library. I go down to the Central Library in Kansas City many times a year, but I never use the Mid-Continent Library. Um, I use Google, and I use um, online. I buy books online. I read them on my iPhone. And um, I think a lot of people do. That is not to say I am against libraries. I am very much for libraries. I appointed Nancy Womack to the Mid-Continent Library Board. And she is the only person on that board that voted no for the tax increase. Moving forward. How do you intend to communicate? Let me kind of start over again. One of the things that you often see with elected officials, especially in today's world with all the digital mediums and abilities to communicate is still a bit of a lack of communication. Having said that, how do you intend to communicate with the public in a way that keeps them more informed regarding meetings, presentations, and decisions? Beverly starts off. Well, we, have, we, are, we operate under the Sunshine Law and we have to post our meetings 24 hours ahead. Not only do we post them, but we also post the agenda. So if you go to our website, you will find out what it is that we are going to be talking about the next day, and then, and then come, come to our meetings. We meet every Monday morning, not every Monday, every other Monday morning at 10 in our, in our uh, council chamber, and you are more than welcome to be there. We will post the agenda uh, at least 24 hours before, both online and up at the courthouse. There are various places within the courthouse where it needs to be by law posted. And we do that all the time. So everybody come and participate. And if you have an issue, call me. If you call 858-3330, it rings here. Okay, that's the number at my desk. It rings Stop. here. Dagmar, same question to you. Um, yeah, I, I think transparency we could always work on, and that's what an issue that, that, that would lend itself to that. Um, if I'm elected, I plan on looking into things that make it more accessible. Not everybody can take off work at 10 o'clock on a, on a Monday to come to a commission meeting. You know, it's not feasible for a lot of people who are interested in government. 
So I would like to look at maybe posting the audio recordings online, possibly live streaming, and then maybe archiving those so people can watch from their desks or to watch from their homes or something like that. Emailing out agendas, that's like a no-brainer. Um, some of these things don't cost a whole lot of money to make government more accessible. You know, emailing out agendas ahead of time, putting on some financial impact information on the agenda items so that we know what's being what's going to be voted on, these are the kind of things. And, and, and also the parks, um, the parks expenditures too was talked about, published that in the paper, and that no. never got done, so I don't know why. We're getting close to the end of the uh, prepared questions. I'm, I'm going to throw in, because I heard uh, Dagmar in your biography say that um, you used to work for the Federal Reserve, is that correct? Yes, sir. And, and, and so kind of a bigger picture question here. How do you guys, and, and what sources, what, what do you use? To a, you, are, you are making economic decisions every day when you vote on something at the courthouse. What do you use to inform yourself on the bigger picture of our economy and what and how things are going? And how does that, going back kind of back to your vision question, how does that play into your understanding of where that vision is? So where are you getting your information from? Um, you start with the last. You start I, I don't know. Dagmar, you can go first. Um, yeah, I, as far as the big picture, I mean, I'm talking to people at doors right now Property taxes are a big issue, so I think, you know, as far as economic decisions, I would not be using property raising property taxes as my go-to. Um, I mean, you can look at housing foreclosures, you know, when the property tax came up for a vote in August of 2009, housing foreclosures were at a 22-year we high, and we had one of the highest sales taxes in, in, uh, in in, in the state of Missouri, and we had a quarter million people out of work. So did it make sense then to go for a full half cent when we also had made a commitment, to, a verbal commitment to the sheriff to have a, a quarter cent uh, sales tax for him, you know, and we, we left him hanging out to dry. So, um, you know, we, there's a lot of economic indicators, foreclosures and employment and the sales tax to the re relative to the area. So, yes. Well, I don't think we ever left the sheriff out hanging out to dry. Um, I do agree that we that we uh, we need we need to absolutely um, inform the public of what we need to do and what we what we are doing, and we need to look at the um, at the budget. And um, I have done that through the vision of. Austrian economics and Austrian economics for those of you who don't know free market economics and it is pay go type system and um, I, you know 2008 just changed my life and what we are doing in Platte County now is not playing the game we're not playing the debt game and we're, not, we're, we're paying as we go and um, there's absolutely nothing that I need to know really beyond that um, kind of an easier question, I guess, in some ways, maybe. But in one word, uh, if other county officials were to describe you or friends that you know would describe you, what one word that would that be and why? Uh, Beverly starts off. Passionate. I'm passionate. I'm passionate about free market economics. I have been since I read None Dare Call It Treason and Conscience of a Conservative when I was 13 years old working for Gary Goldwater on the streets of Greensboro, North Carolina. Amen. I mean that that is that, uh, that is my passion. I never had children. My passion has been free market economics my entire life. I went to Grove City College. Um, it has been what I what I wanted to do. When when um, uh, Ronald Reagan was elected, of course I worked for him. I was in Vermont of all places when uh, I got to vote for him the first time, and then uh, went down to Washington and worked with Mr. Meese in the Justice Department. It is my passion, and um, I am passionate about that, and I am passionate about Platte County, and Platte County is number one, and it needs to stay number one. Dagmar, what one word would describe you? Um, I'm kind of torn between analytical and curious. Uh, as an analyst at the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, I analyzed data, I drafted budgets. That came pretty naturally to me. Um, but serving on the Platte County Jail Committee, I think my curiosity also lended itself really well to this committee because we were given information that I really felt like was not in line with what um, 
what was reality. And so my curiosity got me to asking questions like, where could I find new data? Getting me to meet people like the Northland Planners and Platte County EDC and, 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 and trying to find the old architects to the, to the current jail and, and ask them if they could come down to the basement of the jail and take a look at that and see if we could maybe build out the current futures area at a lot less expensive, um, a less expensive solution. So my curiosity just uh, really has served me well in looking at for some uh, no tax increase solutions and I, I look forward to applying them to the, for the county. So. Moving forward into some audience questions here, there was some, been quite a bit of discussion about bonds um, and, and pay cash. Um, <laughs> Dagmar, if you could start us off. Apparently, this is more a question. I'll cut it to you and to Dagmar. I'll let you comment. Um, explain the question from the audience is explain how we are paying cash, yet we have so many bonds. Well, we're paying cash for what we're doing. I, we have not taken out any more bonds. How about that? I mean, that's it. Of course, the bonds that we have, that prior commissions have taken out, we have to pay for. We are paying for this building right now, for the, uh, for the work that it was done. Um, it was signed by the prior commission, and uh, mu much work was done here, and even more work was done up in Platte City. And we will be paying down those bonds, um, and it will take it will take until the end of the tax to get that paid for. Uh, those are the bonds we have. We have CID, Community Improvement District bonds. We have NIDS, we have Neighborhood Improvement di um, District bonds. We are guaranteeing them. We have Zona Rosa. We basically own the, the, the garages in Zona Rosa and the debt on it. None of that was taken out by this commission. None of it was taken out by us but we continue to pay it down. And when we pay it off, we will not take out any more. Stop. Uh, Dagmar, do you have any that? Well, I mean, I, I love paying for cash. We pay for our cars with cash because we save until we can afford it. You know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna do, I love that. But, um, and I've heard you say, mention about, you're not the Fed, you don't print, you can't print money every time. But first of all, the Federal Reserve Bank doesn't print money, it's the Bureau of Government does that. They but, authorize um, Yes, but um, but every time you raise the property taxes, one penny that's like printing money for for the county, really, on the backs of taxpayers. That's like printing money is raising the property taxes. So anyway, won't well, do that. So um, start. Uh, <laughs> another question from the audience here. <laughs> Talking kind of about one another here, um, how, how do you differentiate yourself from your opponent in terms of policy issues? How do, how do you see that? Uh, Beverly starts on. Well, I'm not sure that we have all that, that much difference. I really don't. Um, but the thing is that I do believe that we need to listen to the taxpayer. I am not going to, and the, and the, the, the parks users and the, you know, all, we need to listen to everyone. And we need to take, I don't, I'm not going to put myself uh, and my beliefs other than the cash, um, but in where we spend the money, we need to listen to the constituents and we need to listen to the people. And I will do that. I, I do believe in leading. I think it's very important to lead and I think leading on this issue of cash will actually take care of it because people are not going to willy-nilly say, oh, let's go do that, because we'll just do it with debt. If we actually pay cash, we will be more deliberative, and we will actually get what the people want. I think we need to question the status quo. I think we need to stop rubber stamping requests. I think we need to cr think critically about what's being put in front of us when it, when it comes to tax dollars. I think we need to stop kicking issues down the road, like DNR violations or funding radios or whatever. We need to deal with these issues. They don't go away. We need to plan long term for expenses that we know that are coming. Why do we put these off? We know that they're coming. We need to start saving money for them and not have the go-to funding of just raising property taxes at the last minute. So Amen. I think these are really big differences that we do have. There's some things that we do agree on, paying cash, yes, amen to that. But we do need to stop kicking issues down the road. We need to be transparent. We need to be responsible to taxpayers. And I plan on doing that. Okay. Next question from the audience. Um, this has some, been something that I, I tend to follow the Clay County Courthouse more. 
and this has been something that's kind of come up over there with our public safe, our, um, our public safety. Uh, as a Republican, I'm reading them. I don't like tax increases, and I do support our police officers. I understand that we lose our officers to other jurisdictions because of our lower pay <coughs> scale. How would you keep our officers competitively paid without raising our taxes? Dagmar starts off. Well, I mentioned the uh, restructuring taxes to lower the overall tax burden. And one of the ways I would like to do that instead of renewing a half cent parks tax, do a quarter cent parks tax, quarter cent law enforcement tax. And that would help provide for us a, a dedicated revenue stream. I would also like to use some of that to help start weaning the county off of the use tax. Um, and the exact figures I'm not down to yet, but um, law enforcement is a priority. It's a core service to county government. And it, it needs to not be a second thought. It needs to be a primary um, priority of the county. And I need to, and I would think that a priority, so. Well, obviously, Dwayne Soper and I believe in law enforcement. We are the ones who have given the raises the last uh, three years. And this year, we also increased the loggers rate uh, for at, mainly at the suggestion of our sheriff. Uh, we are the people who did that. We have never had a unanimous budget. We have always had the presiding commissioner voting against the budget. But we did that, and um, we also this year put a half a million dollars away for the futures build out. And we will put another half a million dollars away at the end of this year, hopefully, unless some, you know, the uh, chicken little the sky is falling. But if not, we will put that away again this year. We are saving for the future. We know that it's coming. Um, saw this recently. Platte County and Clay County were both uh, made pretty high in quality of life. Uh, well, just, now wait a minute. We were way higher than Clay. Clay was fifth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, just talk briefly, what do you think that is, why is that, and what would you plan to do to help continue that current reality? Uh, Beverly starts off. Well, obviously I've been talking about county government. I mean, and, you know, and I think that we continue with what we're doing. That's why I'm running again. I want to keep the momentum going. We have got a great, uh, a great government right now. We're doing the right things. We're putting the money where it needs to be put, and we are not uh, in any way excessively taxing anybody. Did we give our people a raise? Yes, in fact, we did. Did we increase the loggers rate? Yes, in fact, we did. But we had become a, what we euphemistically call a training ground for Riverside for our deputies. I mean, they leave here and they go to Riverside. Now, we will never be able to compete with Riverside because, as you know, they have a basic cash register down there. And it's really not true, and if Kathy Rose were here, she would just kill me for saying that. But at any rate, they do have a lot of industry down there, a lot of business. I think we just continue to do what we're doing. We are, we have, uh, we're 47th on, on, on the number, and Clay is at 95. <laughs> Low man wins. That one. Could you repeat the question, please? Um, basically, the, recently, we, we, Pike County ranked very well in quality of life. What do you think, or why do you think that is, and what do you plan to do to help maintain that? I mean, there are a lot of good things that we do in Platte County. And certainly, investing in the parks and community centers and, and that system has helped tremendously with the um, quality of life here. But I think, you know, I think it's giving a little bit too much credit to, um, to what government does and not enough credit to the, what the people of Platte County are. The people of Platte County are. I mean, seriously, we have a great county we have people who are highly skilled highly educated who care about our county and are, are, are invested in our county and they volunteer in our county and they're we look at all these people here I didn't expect all of you guys to be here <laughs> um, but I mean really I think it's mostly the people and think it's mostly the leadership of the people in this county so I would put a lot less credence in what the county does and a lot more in the people of Black County so um. Question, I think the way I understand this question is, a lot of times you see tax proposals on, on April ballots. Would you, would you support uh, or to commit any and all taxes proposed to be on a uh, November ballot? That Absolutely not. I cannot stand tax increases on April and not, really not even August ballots. 
Um, I think you get the most uh, the most voter input in November, and you know we're both wanting voter input, but November is when we need to have issues on the ballot, and I I will not do that. April is that is just for pushing your own personal agenda, um, and it's usually not good for the taxpayers. So I am absolutely opposed to April taxes uh, on the ballot, and I would really not like to do August if we put November. So. Beverly, go ahead. Okay, I, I agree about April, um, but I don't know, I think August is not a bad, if, if we think about that, because you do get people going to vote and they do care about the county. You'll get more people in August than April. Um, if you go in November, we just need to make sure that the people are educated on what it is, because I can tell you now, if I'm not educated, I'm voting no. All right, and that doesn't necessarily reflect my thought, but I'm going to vote no, and and that's fine. I would like to have a, a a ballot where you have more than people than just some silly election, and, and you know, it, it called for the purpose of getting a few people out to vote for a tax. I don't think that's a good idea at all, but I do think that um, education is the primary thing. I guess if people want to tax that badly, they should be able to um, educate the people in November. I don't have Stop. any objection to that. Um, Andrew, can I make a comment on that too, please? As long as you allow our rebuttal. August 2009, a um, half cent sales tax was on the ballot, and 4% of registered voters passed that half cent sales tax, mm -hmm. coded yes and passed that for the rest of us. 4%. So I really don't even think August is a good one for that, personally. So. Do you have anything else to add? No. All right, taxes, taxes, taxes. We'll talking about that quite a bit tonight. Um, what is your personal philosophy on raising taxes? What, what would be the motivation to do that? And can you talk a little bit about how you define necessities uh, versus amenities? Uh, Beverly, go ahead. I don't see, uh, I don't see any need to raise taxes, that's for sure. Um, the I would like for, um, we are not going to hand the next commission any new debt, I can tell you that, uh, like, like we got handed. Uh, that's not going to happen. And we need to plan ahead so that we don't ever have to raise taxes. Um, that I don't, taxes should not have to be raised. We have a good tax base here, and as Dagmar has said, we're, the sales tax is only going up. It's much higher this year than it was last year, and when Menards opens, and actually Costco, we are going to be getting some benefit off of Costco <laughs> in Platte County. Don't tell anybody, though, because we don't want anybody to figure that out. So once that all happens, we will, we will have, we're, we're going to be fine. Could you read that again? Yeah, yeah, please. Sure can. Uh, <laughs> Here's fine. Taxes are always a major topic in government. What is your personal philosophy regarding taxes and how do you define necessities versus amenities? Um, I don't think the go-to answer to anything should be to raise taxes. I mean, seriously, it, when I served on committees, I'm always looking for no tax increase solutions. Always. I'm just kind of cheap like that. Um, I, and especially property taxes. I mean, those things need to drop down to zero ASAP for the county. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fiscal conservative. I've seen it in my work on the jail committee. Um, I've, not a lot of you have seen it on my work in the ambulance committee, but I just don't believe that it's something that needs to be raised, especially since your tax base for both sales and property tax is continuing to increase because we are a growing county. So. All right, last audience question, and then we'll move on to the closing comments. We'll both get two minutes on those, but we'll take this question first. There was recently a quadruple homicide in Platt County. If the prosecutor decides to seek the death penalty, um, will you provide the resources necessary to prosecute the death case? And how do you personally feel about the death penalty? Uh, Dagmar starts off. Absolutely, without a doubt. I believe in, I will totally support the death penalty in this case if the uh, prosecutor says it's, it, that he wants to go for it. And I will do everything possible to make sure that it's in the budget, that we can afford that. I think it's a priority. That gentleman killed four of his family members, including a three, a three month old baby. 
and we need to make Platte County a safe place and we need to send a message to people who are going to mess with our people that this is not the place to do it. Absolutely not. I would 100% support the death penalty in this case. You just, you can't. Justice for that family is not going to parole hearings year after year and reliving that horror and trying to explain to a parole board that this, this animal, this, this violent offender needs to be kept in jail. Reliving that should not be a victim's, a victim's. Stop. Yes. Beverly. We will do what the prosecutor, we will provide the prosecutor with the resources that he needs to try his case. If he wants to try a death penalty case, the county commission will provide him with the resources. A uh, death penalty case takes generally around 10 years, and we will have it in the budget each year to support that prosecution. Great. Closing comments. Uh, Jim, we're going to do two minutes on these. Uh, Beverly started us off with the opening comments. So, Dagmar, you can close for us first. Okay. Two minutes. Are you ready? Um, yes. Okay. Go ahead. I can't believe it's gone this fast. <laughs> Um, this is the political year for outsiders, and I, I do count myself as one. I'm not a politician, I'm not a bureaucrat, I'm not an EPA lawyer. I'm, I'm a person who likes to get involved in the process, and I have been, uh, and I've supported conservative candidates and causes for the last 22 years, and I've been glad to do that. I've always found myself very comfortable being behind the scenes in a volunteer capacity, but I just felt like this year, I needed to step up and we needed to have we need to have somebody in that first district commissioner seat that has the Platte County values that will that will prioritize public safety, law enforcement, prosecution, that will ensure and budget long term to make sure that our parks and our community centers are well cared for. They will they will put reserves back so that the maintenance can be in the future for those parks and maintenance and, uh, and community centers. And we need to deal with issues and stop kicking issues down the road. We know lots of our expenses ahead of time. The emergency radio mandate we've known since the Clinton administration. We need to be able to plan for things like that. We need to, we need to deal with issues like um, DNR wastewater violations. I mean, why that's gone for nine years, I have no idea. I think there'd be a head rolling or two under my watch if that, if that happened. Um, but we need to deal with issues. So I'm asking you to um, strongly consider me on August 2nd, and I would uh, love to be your first district commissioner. Well, I would love to continue in the job, and again, as I said, we have, um, we have implemented processes and procedures where we have not taken out any additional debt, and we certainly will not. With respect to my political background, in the first grade I refused to vote uh, for student council because the principal explained that it was a democratic election, one person, one vote, <laughs> and I told her that was wrong, that I, was, I wouldn't do it, I was a Republican, because my mother was out trying to get signatures to put the Republican ballot on the ballot in North Carolina. Um, we went to see Henry Cabot Lodge at the Greensboro Coliseum uh, when he came, uh, when he was running as vice president. Uh, that was with Richard Nixon, in case anybody <coughs> wants to remember that. Anyway, um, he uh, uh, then Barry Goldwater and so forth. I have just been a Republican all my life. Uh, with respect to the county, again, we want to do that. Now, one thing I want to say, and that is, with respect to this parks tax, it has been a lightning rod in this county for the last 16 years, and there's no question about it. And when that tax was put up for reauthorization in 2009, a group got together in this county called Citizens for Forever Tax, and I have the documents right here. And people contributed. Actually, Team Sam USA, where's Josh? I, I went to see Josh and said, Josh, is this Sam Graves? And he assures me that it was not. Um, but various people contributed. And John Elliott contributed $600 against the parks tax. Dagmar uh, contributed $500 against the parks tax. $101,000 was spent against that parks tax in 2009, all of it with Axiom Consulting. So, that's what was against the parks tax when it was reauthorized. And I just want everyone to understand that. So this has been a lightning rod issue. No one can argue that we do not have a fantastic park system 
and that it has been implemented well. May I comment on that? Um, I want to thank everyone for showing up tonight. Um, quite the full room, which is wonderful to see. Uh, did you have any closing comments for the group? Or? I would like to thank Andrew Palmer as moderator. Yes. Andrew's going to do the District 2 one as well. I think so. I can look at my schedule, but I think All I right. can probably make that work. And I hear he has a blog. You might check out new his site. New site. New, new site. site. Sorry. <laughs> what's, the, what's the new site? TheNorthlandNews.com. Love for you guys to check it out and share it with your neighbors. Uh, we're trying to do something a little bit differently over in Clay County, and ideally, I'd like to expand to the bigger part of the Northland at some point in the future. And uh, thank you very much for having me. I love that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a couple of